again our worship. <coughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in right path for his name is faith. Gracious God, once again we give thank to you for this beautiful morning which you have given us. We commit me and everyone in your mighty care. Especially we pray for today's teacher. Bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
as a believer. She hoped that her son will hold Bible one day before she dies. She prayed and prayed. God listened. God listened her prayer. Even though she is not alive today, I believe she is happy because her son is standing in front of her. God is just God listens us. God sees our zeal and patience. And God will surely give answers. For today's meditation, I have selected the text from Numbers chapter 27 verses 1 to 11, which is already ready for us. Before meditating on the word of God, <coughs> let us look to God in prayer. Let's pray. Let the word of my mouth and meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Numbers, the fourth book of the Bible, is traditionally ascribed to Moses. This book is divided in three major sections. First section, chapter 1 to 10, deals with the preparation of the Hebrews to the promised land. Second section, chapter 11 to 25, deals with the journey to the promised land. And the last section, chapter 26 to 36, deals with the new preparation for the inheritance to the promised land. According to the scholars, the main theme of the book is based on the concept of land. Scholar like Martin Moore suggested that this text came from this source between Trezorati, but later some parts were added. Some scholars believe that this text is not a historical fact, but they say it is written only to solve the property matters raised by women. The present text numbers 20. 7 verses 1 to 11 deals with the problem of inheritance of the land and the first biblically recorded legal case of Jezebel's <coughs> daughter. As the Hebrew community would enter in the promised land very soon, this is the story from which we can know the sociology of the early Hebrew society and their contribution towards. Biblical theology and ethics. Who were the daughters of Zerophehad? Who were the daughters of Zerophehad? Due to the lack of historical records, it is very difficult to trace the history of Zerophehad and his daughter. From the biblical record, Zerophehad genealogy traced back to Manasseh, <laughs> Mahala, No, Hogla. Milka and Tirza were the daughters of this person. They were the first women who had courage to question the authority for the rights of inheritance requiring <coughs> special liberation from God. Women in the absence of men, family were considered as no one in the Jewish society. They had no identity in the absence of men. They were the women, women who knew that they were going to suffer in the coming days because their father Zerubia died during the 40 years of wilderness without any son or sons. So the daughters were seeking their rights to survive. The claim of the daughters. The claim of the daughters. According to the Deliberate Law, the daughters were not allowed to inherit the land. The reason for that is the daughters would take that inheritance and will marry outside of the tribe. Then the tribe will lose the land and another tribe will become the land of Thus they were not able to get their rights. If they would not get their rights, then they would surely lose their identity and the right of the land. 
the name of the father would disappear from the clan. But they were pious and courageous women. They brought their legal problems to our Moses, Elias, tricks, the leaders, and the entire congregation. This shows their sound understanding of the nature of the desert experience and a just a claim for their family. The piousness of women. The piousness of women. As I told you before, they were the women of faith. They accepted that Zerukha died in the bitterness without any son or son. They accepted that he was a sinner and died in his own sin. But they claim that he was surely not involved in Korah's rebellious activity. Korah and his team murmured against God and Moses. And God burned them. If Zerokahar was involved in it, then his survivor might lose their inheritance. One Jewish scholar and commander, Akiba, suggested that he was involved in the Sabbath reading according to numbers 16, 32 to 36. But it was not the general Rabbanic opinion. Here the daughter wanted to show that he was a part of the entire doomed generation. The acceptance shows that sound understanding of the reality of God's judgment. These women even did not excuse their father. The importance of name in Hebrew society. The daughters argue regarding man's name in verse 4 because it shows that the continued existence of a man's name and it was equally important to Hebrews and one day in which it could be preserved was in connection with the inheritance of his land by his <coughs> descendants. Land. In Hebrew language it is called Eretz, which is a feminine tent. The Hebrews fight for the land the land which gave them identity as a people of God. But it was not possible to inherit the land by female. It was really paradoxical practice they had covered. Why did Moses dream that matter to God? Though Moses was the leader appointed by God, the judge was there. Even he was unable to solve this matter by his own understanding. He waited for God's will. There he showed a great leadership quality and great obedience to God. See, God is the creator of heavens and earth. God gave his land to Adam. God promised Abraham for his land. God delivered Hebrew people from Pharaoh's hand to Moses and God gave the land as a means of salvation for the Hebrews. According to Leviticus chapter 25, the original owner of the land is Yahweh. The original owner of the land is Yahweh. Ultimately, all the land was Yahweh's. Here we see Moses followed the Jubilee principle and he brought this matter to God. See, this section places the right of women to a clear and recognized legal position within the sphere of property law. It also affirms the fundamental Jubilee principle that the unregulated misuse of the landed property is harmful to the well being of the community. It tends to make some Israelites economically dependent on others. Though all are equal in state
status as members of God's community, its other defect is its fundamental failure to recognize that the land <coughs> in the last resort is God's and must be distributed according to God's law. Man holds the land as steward, not as its own honor or ultimate master. And God calls the law and favor the women by listening to their petition. To interpret this text, I read the writings of many scholars and commentaries. All the scholars and commentaries talk about justice of God, inheritance of the land, and this is the main thing for the, all the scholars and in all the commentaries. But one question came in my mind. Was this the only issue regarding property laws in the Bible? No. I don't think. Zerubbabel died due to his sin, but had son or son. Would this matter? Could be an <coughs> If Zerubbabel died due to his son, due to his sin, but had a son or son, would this matter could be an issue? No. Certainly not. Because in the Hebrew society, women had, women had no right to inherit the land. They were discriminated in many ways, even in the laws of inheritance. If he had a son, no issue of inheritance of the land arose. In my understanding, this text came in Bible only due to the injustice towards women in inheritance of land in men and in many other states. This text clearly mentions that in that time, women were discriminated in many ways. Today's condition is the same in jobs, in family, in society, and even in church people. Women are, women, women are discriminated. So this text, through this text, we can see God is just and right. God did not discriminate, but gave equal importance and rights. According to the Indian constitution, some basic rights were given to both men and women. Like the rights to life, according to article number 21. Rights to equality, according to article number 14 and so on. Our constitution also protects women's rights as God. According to Joshua, chapter 12 of this 24, chapter 19 verses 13, 15 verses 6, first thing 15 verses 21 and first Corinthians chapter 7 verses 18. We can see the names of the cities based on the names of these daughters. The author of the book, Numbers, which wish, is to make is simply that women have a right of inheritance. As a future pastor, let us take this social concerns to God and take part in God's act of bringing equality and justice to all. This text bring us, brings to us that God is not partial to any gender, but at the same time, God is partial also. God is partial also. God favor, oppressed, poor, and marginalized that we can know from the history. God mentions equal share of resources, but God has provided to everyone. Here, the women become a model of bringing a genuine issue to the leader, demanding justice and social equality. The leader takes the issue to God, who is the provider of the laws. This text again and again affirms God's concern to the weak, needy, 
and my new life. God who acts in destiny is still active in being those who are <coughs> suffering. Let's think. Dear Lord God, we are thankful that you have given this time to understand and meditate on your word. Lord, this is the day, this is the day that everyone is suffering. There are so many oppressions in this society. Lord, who liberate us, Lord, liberate us from all these oppressions. Give us wisdom, give us courage. We ask this prayer in the 